There we go. Yes. Hello, everybody. Hello, Daisy. Hello, Daisy Lynn. Hello, um, anybody else that comes in? We get a little more lighting here. Bang out. Whoops. Bang out. There we go. Um, so today is our nice chill out day. Hopefully, we get a couple more folks coming in to enjoy our nice restful um, uh, session today on uh, on the old YouTubes. Uh, let me just scoop this back from inside because it's a little bit wet out, not a good day, or uh, to be outside rolling around when we're getting some nice relaxation. So let's start uh, standing up. And uh, why don't you just find a, you know, if you're just hanging out, you're waiting in line at the grocery store, find whatever stance that might be. So for me, it's something like this. I mean, again, I, I always like to you know, acknowledge uh, what, what's going on with me. My left foot tends to turn out a little bit. That's just how I am, all right? So I'm not going to correct that and go, well, I need to be a robot and be on, on two Cs. My left foot just tends to turn out. So I'm going to stand in a comfortable way as if, again, I'm waiting at the grocery store or waiting in line uh, or just hanging out, right? So it's a kind of semi-neutral version of my regular habitual stance, all right? So then from there, what I want to do is I want to just find an easy weight shift from one foot to the other. So we're going to find the pressure on kind of the outside of one foot. And then we're gradually going to find that shift. Hello, Isela, thanks for jumping in here. So we're just finding that shift from one foot to the other foot. It's a very, very simple movement. But if you pay attention to yourself, and you really move slowly, you will start to feel a real deep sense of calm already coming over. That's kind of the part of the intention here. Not all the intention, huh? But what I want you to do is just sense that shift of weight from one foot to another. Right, and see if you can drop into the details of what that feels like. Now again, for me, it's gonna be a little bit different from my left to my right foot. So my left foot, I tend to kind of, what is it? It's like I'm skipping the inside of the foot and jumping to the outside, right? So that's just a, something that's, that's idiosyncratic to me and you're gonna have your own version of that. All right, good. So let's bring yourself right back to center and just feel, okay, what's different about the way you're standing now? a different sense of kind of uprightness or ease on the floor. So now we're going to do something a little more difficult, which is shift from the balls of the feet and then slowly to the heels of the feet. So now the, the sapling that is you is wafting on the other plane, right? So before we were going left and right, now we're going forward and back, right? And see if you can find a degree of shifting that feels safe and comfortable. You don't want to fall backwards or forwards. But also where you're, I wouldn't say pushing the edge, but you're just, you're just playing with that. Well, how far can I go and still feel comfortable? Going forward and back. So we're now moving on a line that is perpendicular to the line you were working on before. Very simple. Make sure that the, the knees are not fully locked out. And then come to the center again, and just feel yourself now kind of standing over the heels of the feet and just feel what information is now coming in from your feet and from the ground, right? I would say for me, my feet still, they feel a little bit more active, right? The, the, um, the antenna are a little bit more out in the world, a little more like aware of what's happening, right? So, and that, and that, that, that sensation is actually traveling up from my feet, knees, pelvis, all the way up through my whole self in that my body is now a little bit more present, a little more alive in space, okay? So now let's take, so we've done the forward and back, that's the sagittal plane. We've done the left, right, we've done the frontal plane. So let's now take it into a transverse plane. So we're going to actually make a circle with the whole self. Now this is a little different from our usual hip, uh, rotation here, right? We're now just going to take it uh, the full body, again, as if we are a sapling, a tree, the whole self is going to travel in a circle, yeah? As you do this, make the breath drop low in the torso, right? So you're not, don't worry about falling, right? 
that's the thing. So we're worried about falling or panicking. The, 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 the breath comes up here. See if you can drop it down and find that sense of the circle across the blade, the outside edge of the feet, to the heels, to the other blade of the foot, to the balls of the feet across the toes, all the way around. Now, when you're ready, shift uh, to the other direction. So I was going counterclockwise. I'm going to go clockwise now. And it's interesting when you think about it, think about the print of your foot on the floor where you have these, the edges of the feet, the toes, the outside edge, the heel. In a sense, it does create a circle, right? Your two feet together uh, make a circle with the, with the center being, uh, with, with the arches of the feet kind of lifted off the floor. So that creates a kind of open space in the middle. So in a way, you are kind of going around a circle. Shift directions again, why not? Play around, just feel a nice rotation. Now, the question is, can we go just a little bit faster without losing that sense of safety and control, right? So now we're all kind of on a, on a ship at sea, right? Let's go, you can shift, shift directions again. So we're all kind of on a, on a, on a ship that's uh, kind of shifting, but it's all cool, right? Just feel how much range you surprisingly have here, right? Without, again, breaking at the hips. But you can actually, just using the, the um, sensitivity of the feet on the floor, you actually have a good amount of range of motion. All right, good. Leave it alone and uh, just pause for a second and just feel, again, now your presence and your weight on the floor, right? Now, again, I'm feeling a, a greater connection with the bones. I'm feeling, again, more information coming from, from the floor and all that is really good. I'm feeling a sense of ease across my chest, my arms, my shoulders, all that is really good. For me. So let's come back to, um, uh, let's just come a little bit wider with the stance, okay? So now I'm going maybe just wider than shoulder width, a couple inches wider than shoulder width. And now let's take the hips in our slightly more standard rotation here around. And let this be a different, it's a new different experience, right? It's not the same as when you just start out with this move. Now again, again, I'm just, I'm just notating for myself, just to kind of put it in a space, something's going on in that right hip. It's a little less um, willing to come along and there's a little kind of zap at some point, like my, like there's some kind of uh, nerve impingement just a little bit in there, not, not extreme, but what I'm gonna do there, and I would encourage you to do something similar if you have an area on this circle, is I'm gonna go real slow through that point and see if I can get through it without irritating anything, right? So I'm just gonna be very sensitive to what's going on. Again, see my right hip. You might be totally fine. You might have no problems in here. And if that's the case for you, that's great. And you just continue, let's go the other direction. Now I'm gonna approach this other direction in a kind of similar way, I'm gonna I'm gonna see what's going on through that just that circle. Just be very sensitive and kind to myself as I do this. I'm not gonna skip any step and jump into doing a big movement or a big uh, muscle contraction. All right, very nice, good. Now let's bring it in a little bit. Again, just find your weight on the floor. Let those shoulders drop. Let's see how. Uh, this new sense of awareness of the whole skeleton is informing your movement and just your, the way you're standing on the floor. And just notice, I mean, we've been working for, I don't know, I mean, doing things in earnest for maybe five or six minutes here. Just feel how that changes, you know, how that, just that five or six minutes can be a nice little reset of your whole nervous system. So now let's do the same thing with the shoulders. I want to uh, find a little circle to the back where you're finding some space underneath the armpits, you're finding some space with those rolled shoulders. Now, as you're doing this, there's a great opportunity to find ease and softness in your jaw, right? Because all this area, the shoulders, the shoulder blades, the jaw, the face, the neck, it's all connected, right? So if you've got a lot of tension kind of running from your brain and your nervous system into the shoulders, it tends to also affect the jaw. So see if as those shoulders are coming around, you don't want to force anything, but see if you can just 
allow the jaw to rest, right? And if that means that the mouth kind of comes open a little bit, I always used to, you know, just, I used to be the one in class in my film press class with the, sorry, my bike's beeping over there, um, that had my mouth kind of hanging open because I was like, well, why, why if I'm trying to find ease when I squeeze my jaw together? So I encourage you at home there to find that softness through the jaw as well. Let's go both directions with the shoulders. And just go real uh, easy through there. All right, good. And just find that, yeah, I'm good. Just find it, find it just a little bit of movement, a little softness through the hips, the, the, um, the upper back, uh, the shoulders just a little bit. Let the knees be a little bit soft. And just feel again that organization of the skeleton, right? You dial up your attention to the skeleton and it tends to encourage the muscles to kind of find their natural degree of uh, tonus that's gonna keep you up. Most of the time, when we first kind of get up in the morning, we use a little bit too much uh, energy that we need to find that upright position. So in this way, we could bring the attention to the skeleton, then it's a little bit easier. So now just walk around just a little bit with that new sense of a new awareness of the skeleton, right? And see if you can hold on to it, that new sense of ease. Breath dropped, shoulders dropped. You know, you could step over. I just stepped over something. You don't have to be a zombie, you know? And you don't have to go like terribly slow as you do this if you want to go just a little bit faster. And see if you can even hold on to that sense of uh, uh, efficiency as you walk, right? Very simple kind of move. All right. Very good. So let's come on to the back and we'll do a little bit of. We'll do a little stuff on the back. Um, so I would encourage you to go. I'm going to keep my shoes on just because it's, I don't want to take the time. But I would encourage you to go shoeless. So let's just pause for a moment. Um, two options. Option one is the one I'm doing with my legs bent. Option two is legs straight out. Just check. Do a check and see which one you prefer right now. It may be different. So actually, what I'm feeling right now is I prefer to have my, my legs actually fully straight so I can find that easy rest. So in yoga, they say this is the hardest pose of all, which is savasana, right? It's a kind of uh, a fully a surrendered pose. So again, find the ease in the jaw. Find the uh, weight in the shoulder blades onto the floor, all right? Now, let's bring the arms out to the side. See for a moment how you're breathing. Where is the breath moving your torso? Is it low in the torso? Is it medium in the torso? Is it up in the chest somewhere? Feel where the breath wants to go very easily and efficiently right now. And then you're ready. Go ahead and bend your knees. Maybe that's, maybe you're already there. Already there. And what we want to do here is now find that easy drop of the knees one way or the other. Now, very important, it's early in the morning, right? So what you don't want to do is do anything big and sudden and intense to the lower back. Now, why is that in particular? Because you've been lying down, your back, uh, there's fluid in your spinal wrists. There's additional fluid in your spinal wrists. It takes about an hour of being upright so maybe you've gotten up early and so it's, it's had a chance to kind of drain out. But you don't want to do a lot of really intense movement through the spine in the first hour of being awake because you want to let that fluid kind of equalize in your spine, okay? So now what I'm doing is I'm turning my head opposite the knees. We've done this many times. Let the head turn and let the knees slowly fall to the side, okay? Nice. Oh, yes. Good. And now just find, see if as you're doing this, you can find a complete spiral of the spine. So the head is turning one way. The knees are turning the other. So I can feel plenty of rotation in my low back. I can feel the rotation in my neck. Can I also feel it in my ribs? Now let's do this. Turn your head to one side. Let's say, let's just all do the same way. Turn your head to the right. Bring your knees to the left. Now take your left hand and place it on the rib cage on the right. 
and just do a little bit of palpation. So what I'm gonna do is hold these ribs. I'm gonna gently pull them toward my left. So I'm asking for a little more rotation in the ribs, right? And I'm gonna move that hand up a little bit further kind of into the, uh, almost to the armpit. And I can grab hold of this kind of muscle right here and I can ask the length there, right? This is a kind of self, uh, self-functional integration lesson. So I'm getting into these armpit, this armpit and I'm pulling gently on this root, this root cage. All right. Good, now place the arm down and then just breathe as much as I can into this side of my root cage, my right side. Ah. Uh, One more time. So I got a little, little cold here, a little hang on from that COVID. And now I'm gonna restack. I'm gonna bring my head back to center. And I'm gonna bring my knees back to center. And I'm just gonna hold on there for a second. I'm gonna feel how the two sides are now different. I feel like I've got more length along my right side, a little more, uh, a little more closed up together along, along my left. So let's see if we can, we can uh, kind of equalize that. Slowly bring the knees over to the right side and bring the head over to the left. Now, it's possible you might not be able to go as far, and that's fine. Now, I'm going to take my right hand and place it on my ribs on my left side, and I'm just gently going to create a little bit of size and space and movement through there. That's all really awesome. And I'm going to move, I'm going to move kind of into the armpit area just a little bit. I don't want to, you know, it's not, I'm not yanking on myself. I'm just kind of with my fingers. I'm just kind of drawing attention to that area to say, hey, guys, you don't have to hold on here, right? I might even put my fingers, that's actually kind of cool. I can put my fingers between my ribs here a little bit and get very specific about where I'm asking for some uh, movement here and some size, right? Just getting those fingertips in there. All right, good. Now I'm slowly going to bring my knees up back to the center. I'm gonna bring my head back up to the center and then I'm going to just breathe here for a moment. Finding the openness through my chest. Uh, relaxing my jaw, very good. All right, now I'm gonna grab the front of one knee. I'm gonna grab the front of the other knee. And I'm just going to pull gently my knees toward my chest. Now like that, what I wanna do is circle. I wanna take my knees both in a circle away from me and then over to the side and then toward me again. So I'm kind of circling, I'm, I'm, I'm tracing a circle around my sacrum, right? So I'm using that to steer me all the way around How's your jaw doing? Check on that, right? Are you fully released into the floor? That is a good thing to notice. Let's go the other way. I, I, I'm not gonna do, what I'm not gonna do is bring my knees together. I kind of want my knees to operate almost independently, right? All right, so, so I'm really, I'm steering around in this nice circle around my sacrum gently around, and then I can switch directions whenever I want, right? Tracing that circle around and feeling, just mapping that part of myself, right? It's all about kind of creating a more accurate self-image. How precisely do you know where you are in space and how, you know, what space you take up and how your body is? Right, change directions whenever you want. It's kind of a baby-like movement here. Let's speed it up just a little bit. So you go one way, I can go the other way. Yeah, good. Now let's try this. Bring the knees just a little closer into your armpits. Let the knees spread a little bit. So I'm getting a little closer in. You can still keep the pelvis and the, the sacrum on the floor. And then continue that action. Just pull the knees a little closer. So we're getting a little bit even more openness through the hips. It's kind of cool that we can find that, all right? Good, all right, let's take a break. Place the feet down, extend the legs out. Ah, uh, and just see, ooh, nice. 
feel how there's a new length in the spine, right? Particularly maybe through the lower back, right? There's a little less space behind that lower back, and that's kind of nice. It's a nice sensation. All right. Now, uh, let's go ahead and roll on. So I'm going to roll onto my right side. You can roll onto either side you want. Uh, but I'm going to describe this as if I'm on my right side because I am on my right side. I'm going to draw my knees up so that they are stacked on top of one another and so that my knees are roughly 90 degrees to my spine. Okay, so pretend like you're lying on your side, but you're on a you're on a chair, right? So we have this 90 degree angle, knees to spine, right? So we don't want to be open here necessarily. We want to be a little bit more knees pulled up to spine. Now look at your knees. As I am right now, my left knee and my right knee are more or less stacked on top of one another. What I want to do now is a movement with my left hip so that the left knee slides forward of the right knee. And then I'm gonna go do the reverse of that so that the left hip goes back and that the left knee thus goes back as well. And then I'm gonna repeat that, left and right, or, or forward and back. I'm gonna work pretty gently here. I'm gonna work kind of slowly here. <coughs> Excuse me. So you feel the hip travels forward and the knee travels forward, right? So I'm driving the knee forward of the other knee, all right? Good, now I'm gonna leave that alone. Now I'm gonna place my left hand, take my watch off first. I'm gonna take my left hand, put it on top of my right hand. Now, if I need a pillow or something here to support my head, that's fine. I can also kind of have my head on my arm a little bit, that works. Now, what I'm gonna do here, left arm is gonna stay straight, okay? Left elbow is not gonna bend. I'm gonna slide my left hand forward, 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 until my fingertips of my right hand are touching my inside of my left wrist. Then I'm gonna go back the other way and I'm gonna slide the left hand back, 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 back. Again, I am not going to bend my left arm, right? If I wanted to, I could do this all day, but I don't want to. I want to go back, 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 back. So the fingertips of my left hand come near my right wrist. Then I'm going to slide it forward. I'm going to alternate between those two actions. Sliding hand forward. And sliding hand back. Without bending my elbow at any point. You may feel the left knee sliding forward and back, and that is cool. That is totally cool. In fact, let's go ahead and add to that. So slide the left knee forward as the left arm is traveling forward, and then slide it back. The left knee goes back as the left arm goes back. Again, the elbows are straight. If you're doing this, you are off the reservation. You're doing your own thing, which I certainly approve of, I think it's fine, but you're not doing this particular Felton Press lesson. So I'm sliding forward and back. All right, good. Now pause. Go ahead and put your arm under your, underneath your head, support for a moment. Just rest. Rest, rest. Ah. All right, good. Now I'm going to take my left arm, I'm going to reach it toward the sky, okay? So my left arm is vertical. And I'm going to pretend like I'm trying to touch the ceiling with the fingertips of my left arm. So I'm reaching up with that left arm. Then I'm going to release my shoulder blade toward the center of my back. So first I'm going to reach up, and then I'm going to huh, let that shoulder blade fall kind of onto my back. If I need to, I could kind of shift the arm back behind me a little bit. All right, I'm gonna reach it up and then I'm gonna let it fall. And I'll reach it up and I'll let it fall into the pocket, into the pocket, toward the shoulder blade, toward the shoulder blade. Reach it up, fall toward the shoulder blade. Good. Now, keeping that shoulder blade falling into the pocket toward the center of my spine. 
I'm gonna take the arm and I'm gonna turn it. Rotate, and then I'm gonna turn it and I'm gonna rotate the other way. So left arm is pointing up toward the sky. I'm turning it on its axis. Now I'm not doing this. Some people say, okay, rotate your arm, they do this. Nope, we wanna pretend like the arm is an axle and we're turning it on its own axis, okay? Feel when you rotate the arm forward that that shoulder blade tends to pull away from the center of the back. And then when you rotate the arm back, it tends to rotate toward the, or tends to fall toward the center of the back. So find those two positions. All right, good. Now, go ahead and bring the left arm down toward the right hand. So now we're stacked again. And then slide the left hand forward and slide it back. And I, for one, am I feeling a much greater range of motion through there. I can get my left hand way further forward and I can get my left hand way further back still without bending the arm, which is kind of cool. Now, add this, slide, deliberately slide your left knee forward so the left hip comes forward as you slide the left arm forward. You may even be able to get the front of your left shoulder onto the floor or close to it, onto the other arm. Now slide the left knee back as you slide the left arm back. Ah, and then repeat forward. Knee comes forward and arm comes forward and then go back. Oh yes, yeah, so good. All about the ribs here, folks. All about the ribs, all about the shoulder blades. Yeah, forward and back. All right, good. Pause for a second. On your side, just lie there. <sighs> so you can sense that idea of a really soft and pliable rib cage, right? In fact, let's do this a little bit. Take your left shoulder and just maybe find a little circle with it, circle to the back, right? You can take your left hand and place it on your ribs and you can get a little bit more uh, movement through there. Or you can place the hand down on the floor and just feel that amazing freedom of movement there in that left shoulder. Cool. All right, good. One more step on this side and then we'll switch it up. Go ahead and lie again. Hands stacked. Now, take your left knee and bring the left knee back as you extend the left hand forward. Then do the opposite of that. Bring the left knee forward as you bring your left hand back. So just find that. Now we're doing the opposite of what we were doing before. Instead of doing everything sliding forward and then everything sliding back, we're alternating. We're, doing, we're working out of phase. Left knee goes back as left hand goes forward. Left knee goes forward as left hand goes back. See if you can feel the mid back moving as you do this, just a few times. Okay, good. Now go back to moving everything together. Left hand forward, left hand back. Ah, as left knee goes back as well. Left hand forward, left knee forward. Ah, left hand forward as left knee goes, uh, left, left knee goes back as left hand goes forward. All right, good. Now, once you're there, uh, just feel that you can roll fairly easily now onto your back, back to a nice restful position. Ah, nice. Now, just see, see how we do it on time. See how you are on the floor. See how your connection is with the floor. Feel the difference between the two sides. Is there a side that feels softer, more awake, more alive? Is there a side that feels more, um, what, more grounded, more rooted? Roll your head a little to left and right. See how that feels. All right, now let's come on to the other side. 
So I'm gonna rearrange myself. Oof. So I'm gonna come on to my left side. And we're gonna do kind of the same setup, all right? The same setup. Now we don't have to spend as long on this side because this side will have already learned a little bit from the other side, all right? So here I am. I've got my left hand, uh, my right hand on top of my left hand. I'm 90 degrees with my knees, right? I'm not, um, I'm not uh, uh, less than that. Yeah. So now, before we start, let's do this. Take your right foot and lift it a little bit away from your left foot and then place it back down. And then repeat that. Right foot floats off the ground and then come back, comes back down. Right foot floats, so the knees stay together. Right? And I float my foot off. Now let's do the opposite. Feet stay together and the knee lifts. And then I lower back down. It's like a clamshell action, right? Then the foot lifts and lowers. Work slowly, work easily. Good. Now lower it back down. And then gently slide your right knee forward of your left knee and then back and repeat that. Right knee travels forward, right knee travels back behind the left knee. So feel, it's probably a little easier on this side because you've essentially done the same thing before. You've just done it in a, in the opposite way where the right, right knee is rooted and the left knee is moving. Now the right knee is moving, the left knee is moving. All right, good. Place your left hand, right hand top of your left. Slide that left, the right hand forward, and then slide it back. Now you may be surprised to feel that that right hand can go a little bit further than the left hand could initially. It's sort of because we've already mobilized and moved the left side, and the left side is also responsible here. So let yourself slide. Let that right hand slide forward ah, and then gently slide back all to the good, toward the back, slide forward all to the good, yep, and then slowly to the back, really awesome, yes, and then repeat. Ah. Good, now float the right hand up toward the sky. It's vertical now. Then go ahead and reach the fingertips toward the sky and then let the, let the shoulder blade fall toward the center of the back. Reach up and then it comes down. Reach up at your own pace. Let that shoulder blade fall into the pocket, the, the, uh, the, kind of, the, the pocket toward the center of the back. Good, now keep it in the pocket and then rotate the arm inside around the axis, along the axis, not like this, along the axis, okay? Nice, and then go ahead and bring the arm down. Slide the right hand forward, let the right knee also go forward. Slowly slide the right knee back and the right hand back, ah, moving toward the back. And then repeat, forward, let the shoulder travel toward the floor and then back, ah, let that shoulder, let the, those ribs open up. I guess I'm cheating a little bit, letting my right arm bend a little bit as I come back. Uh, ah, the film press police will not come and get you if you do that. Right, as it's just naturally gonna bend a little bit as I roll to my back, right here, it's naturally gonna bend a little bit. And then my fingertips can get close to the inside of my left elbow. All right, nice, good. Now let's just do a little of the reciprocal version. So let the right knee travel forward as the left hand travels back. Guess what, you're not gonna be able to get anywhere near as far back, that's okay. Then let the right hand travel forward as the right knee goes back. So we're doing one thing with the lower body and we're doing the opposite thing with the, with the upper body. Let the spine rotate a little bit. Find some rotation in your spine and that will allow you to execute this movement easily and smoothly. 
All right, good. Now go everything together again. Hand and knee go together. Hand and knee go together to the back. Ah, it's crazy openness through my rib cage now. Crazy integration through the shoulder. All right, good. Very nice. Let's come onto the back just for a moment. Ah, yes. Good. We got about four minutes. Just pause for a moment on your back before you do anything. I'm, I'm, I'm here with my knees up. You can, of course, straighten your legs if you like. Ah. Feel the floor coming up to hold you up. Feel the sense of release through the chest, the, the, the collarbones, the, the pelvis, the feet, the knees. Feel that sense of full release into the floor openness. And then we'll go ahead and tip the knees to the left and to the right. Ah. Just a little bit. Feel now how much rotation you're finding in your upper back. Not just the lower back, but the upper back. All that is really pretty cool. All right. Nice, let's go ahead and roll to one side and slowly bring yourself up to standing. Ah, yes, and just find your feet on the floor. Find us to that nice upright position. Ah, uh, I think I rushed that a little bit. <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna pass out just a bit. You feel that, just look at your hands. If I give yourself your eyes something to focus on and you'll find that nice stance again. So now, once again, just come back to checking in in an upright position. So my weight is nicely dropped. I should feel most of the weight on my heels, right? I would say that normally, if I'm walking around, my hips are a little forward, right? A little something like, so, so my, my posture, if I exaggerate, would be something like this. Now, again, the word posture is not great because it tends to make people think about tension. All right. I want you to feel that you've now found uh, an easy, natural posture that is very efficient. Right? So again, I feel like I can stand for a long time without shifting around or without getting pain, just because everything is so nicely stacked. Right? So when you think posture, see if you can think, if you're ever like, oh, I need to improve my posture, think about this position, this, this um, uh, form of organization to your skeleton, as opposed to something that has a lot of tension. Let's go ahead and rotate the hips. Allow the upper body now to move so we're not kind of doing our sapling thing. We're letting the hips rotate. And just feel how much smoothness there is in there, how much ease of movement you can find through there. Very gentle, very easy. Go the other direction if you can. Just find that nice, easy movement. Again, the skeleton, right? Feel that the, the muscles in a way are, it's not that they're flaccid, it's not that they're, um, that there's no tension in them, it's that there's an appropriate amount of tension, right? There's, there's the right amount of tension that you need to feel stable, right? But also supple. So let's do this. Bring the feet together. Let's reach the arms up. Deep breath, palms together. Go ahead and bring the palms down to the center of the chest. Take an easy breath in through your nose. Press the palms together and feel the heartbeat between the fingertips. Breathe out through your mouth. Let the jaw drop as much as you can in through the nose. Out through the mouth. Just feel again that suppleness. It's not a tension that's keeping you up. It's a softness. You may feel yourself just gently shifting. This fine scale variability. You may find that little bit. That's kind of cool. All right, go ahead and slowly drop the arms down by your side. Take a step out, and we will call that a, uh, a workout for the day. We'll tell everyone we had a really intense workout, right? <laughs> Thanks a lot, yourself. Thanks a lot, Daisy. Uh, Daisy Lynn. And I'll see everybody uh, tomorrow or Monday or even Sunday for the strength class. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Have a great uh, Friday, and see you soon. Bye.